I'm gonna try this out, see how this goes. Are you like me? Decent gamer, you know, silver gold on Overwatch, a couple of level 70s on Diablo 4. And recently I've played a few leagues of PoE and with the new league start, I've got about 100 hours of game time. And you watch a beginner's guide when you start and it's super helpful for that first run through and you start to get into it, you know, you learn path of building a little bit, you get awakened PoE and you can kind of check a price and you want to learn more, you want to get better. And like, I think about my first build was a cold dot elementalist in the crucible league. I got to level 86, but I couldn't kill a boss to save my life. So that made me want to understand more and how to level faster. How do I craft better? How do I make more money? And I've watched so much of Zizaran's content and Rax's content and Palsterion's content and all of the other POE creators and no slight to them. They are so crucial in my growth of POE. They make some of the best beginner guides out there. They do some of the best talking about at a really high level, some of the end game mechanics and deep mechanic stuff. Uh, I think they do a magnificent job on the opposite ends of the POE gamer spectrum. So someone on their first 50 hours, like I was, or someone that's crossing their hundredth hour and they really want to learn the ins and outs and nuances of theory crafting or crafting in general or how a specific mechanic can be min-maxed. I think they speak to that perfectly. But what about us, 120 hour Andes, people who've beaten the campaign three or four or five times, who've you know, never beaten a boss, uh, never made it to an uber boss, who've only gotten one character above level 70. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can hit that zone that I've been looking for. I'm gonna call this series uh, Tips for the Mid Gamer. And that's one specifically about PoE. So before we get into it, if you've never played PoE, I strongly suggest grabbing a build guide off of Max Roll and hitting up any of the other content creators that I've mentioned above. They do great, 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 great jobs at their beginner's guide, complete beginner's guide. I would say if I had to pick, I would say before you start playing, watch Rax's POE's beginner's guide. I think he does such a, such a good job at speaking to someone who's never touched it. Um, you know, since he blasts and learns games in such a deep way with the sole focus on being wanting to make guides, he's very, very good um, at beginner's guides and his POE one included. And while you're playing, I would watch the most recent leagues um, of Zizaran's campaign walkthrough. It's usually like a four or five hour video. He quite literally plays act one through 10 um, and it is explaining everything along the way. So with the basis of the POE beginner guide um, in watching that campaign walkthrough while you play it yourself, you're gonna to learn tons playing along with this on my side monitor was probably some of the most valuable YouTubing in my POE career. Highly recommend it. Okay, now on to the mid gamer tips. Tip number one, don't be precious about the campaign. It's a tutorial. It's there to introduce you to mechanics, start dropping you some gear and gems, start showing you a few mechanics and get you to maps. The, the, the campaign's job is to get you to maps and fill out your passive skill tree, or the first part of it. Um, this is something that I wish was told to me after that first campaign run through of mine, when I went to go do it a second and a third time. Um, I, you know, it didn't occur to me that like, the first six maps that I do, like the first few times that I run through the map device, I'm gonna get better gear and more currency than I will get. I got in the whole campaign. Right, like in the whole campaign, I maybe got nine or nine or ten chaos orbs, like that dropped. Um, in my first run through of maps, I got like forty, or got forty, like fifteen to twenty, and that took 10, 15 minutes tops. So, get to maps, right? When you're doing the campaign, think of five things, right? Just the whole time, you're just you're you are slogging through the campaign as fast as you can. 
Um, if it's not your first run through, if it's your first run through, take your time, pay attention, enjoy the world, enjoy the story, enjoy the fights, enjoy the enjoy everything about it. Take I don't care, it doesn't matter how long you take it the first time. Do whatever you want. But if you are trying to get better and trying to like experience more of the game, the campaign easily will be in the way if you don't think about it this way. So concentrate on five things during the campaign. Get life and resistances on everything. That'll it's just it's it, it you'll you need to be resistance capped by the time you get to maps. Um, you pretty much need to be resistance capped when you fight Katava. You're gonna lose resistances as you go along, and you need life, right? The enemies hit harder. The more life you have, the longer you live, right? So you get life and resistances on everything, however you can. Get better upgrades with it. Um, do some minor crafting on it. Um, just like craft on life, craft on craft on resistances. Uh, get movement speed on your boots. Right, that's the only like you get boots. You want more movement speed as you go along. It just feels fat better to move quicker. Uh, get the gems that your build guide says to get. Get your flasks the way they're supposed to be set up. It's usually a life flask, a quicksilver flask, and then one of three utility flasks. Usually, depending on your build, like something to bolster what your passive skill tree and other things are going to handle. Um, and then get the right colors and the right links on your gear. That's all you care about. So when you're running through, you just do it, go hard. And when you're looking at an item, check these five things. And if it helps with that, get it. If it doesn't, keep going. It doesn't need to be perfect. You just, you're gonna get better stuff as soon as you get to maps. You just need to get, you need to beat the campaign. And these five things are, are the only real blockers. It, life and resistances is obviously more important in hardcore, uh, but it's also a pretty good quality of life in softcore as well. Dying is annoying. Nothing is sacred or crucial or breakable in the campaign. As long as you are following, if you're following a build guide and getting the right passive skill points, your only thing you can break is it's not easy to respec. So you need to be picking the correct skill points. And the only, the only other thing you can do is spending your currency throughout the campaign, trying to get your gear to a really min max level. Don't do that. Like save all of your currency, use it to craft on life and resistances. That's, that's it. Maybe, maybe some minor rolling if you're like rich in transmutes. Um, I found my, like, I, I found myself staring at my links needed at level 28 on a max roll build guide, killing time in my hideout, trying to like cobble together a couple of chaos orbs to try to buy the right piece that had it. And since I was a low level, I couldn't find one that I could put on at the time that had the colors I needed. So I compromised and then wasted a lot of chromes and wasted a lot of um, like orbs of fusing to try to get it to work um, because the build guide said, I need Herald of Thunder at this level and I don't have enough intelligence. It's not that crucial. You can wait a while to get Herald of Thunder. You can, if you never get the right gear throughout it, you like just compensate for it somewhere else. Like you don't have to nail it the whole way through the campaign. Whatever you have problems with, you can fix in maps so much faster. Just get out of the campaign. Um, it's not, like I said, it's not that crucial. You'll be fine. Follow the passive skill tree in your guide, pick up upgrades, keep on trucking. Um, I honestly, I would suggest not even thinking about your gear really until you're hurting in the campaign. Maybe the first 20 levels, you're really like, is this better? Is this better? Is this better? Once you get once you get gear at level 20, 25, I wouldn't even care about trying to find better upgrades and stuff until you're hurting, until you're like dying somewhere. And again, this is softcore, not hardcore. Hardcore, pay a little more attention, get more life resistance, try not to die. Uh, but if you're softcore and you're just trying to get through it, don't wait until you're hurting. Wait until you are having a hard time. Then take a minute, stop, see where you're supposed to be at in your build guide gem wise and uh, resistance wise, fix your resistances. Fix your links, fix your gems, do whatever you can do. Um, don't spend a lot of money on it, but do what you can do and get back on it. The only thing, the, the only caveat to this is if you have gems that need to, like if you have gems that you can get, but you can't link them correctly or you can't use it yet, for some reason, try to put it on a piece of gear somewhere um, just so that it's leveling while you're going through. And yeah, so when you're hurting, go to your hideout, see what you can craft, buy, roll, and then get back. 
Um, don't stress about the right bases. Does it have the armor, energy sealed evasion rating I need? Does it have more res? Does it have more life? Does it have more damage? Pick it up and go. Uh, you'll get better stuff in maps and have more currency and better ways to farm what you need after the campaign. No, no amount of time that you're spending in the campaign trying to min-max something is most likely something you can solve in five or six maps. So just get into maps. Um, once, you get, once you get to the campaign, you can start turning your min-max brains on. Um, you need those fat currency and loot drops in maps to really do anything of substance. And the extra few hours you'll spend in the campaign trying to get just a little more spell suppression or the right base, you can solve it about, like I said, 15 minutes in, in maps. To number two, use this quick reference leveling guide. If you've done the campaign once or twice, this is what you put it on your side monitor, this is what you use. Um, of all the formats I've ever seen of leveling, um, this is the most efficient for people who've done it two or three times. You know, max rolls is really great your first time, maybe your second time, because it breaks down every single step, every single thing you gotta do, every person you gotta talk to, tips and suggestions on how not to die in a certain place, boss mechanics, all that stuff. Now, I've beaten Brutus like six times, like six to 10 times. I don't need a, I don't need a paragraph that's in a drop down that tells me how to do it. I know where Nessa is. I know how to find Clarissa. I know how to beat the bride boss. I don't remember the most efficient way to do it. And you know, just following the thing on the side that tells you what your quest is, is not the most efficient way. This breaks it down just literally like step by step, go here, go here, get this, go here, get this waypoint. Go, that's, it's perfect. And since it's in a text format, I don't even have to like leave my window. I usually can do like 15 steps before I have to do anything. Um, and with about two full scrolls of the window, I finish an act. And so that saves a lot of time, you know, tabbing out of your window to go see what you're supposed to do next. This is, th and this is what I mean for like mid gamers. Like a lot of these people don't talk about a really efficient way to like get through your leveling experience. Um, if you don't have it memorized already, they either expect you to be like, you don't know it well enough. So go to max roll, watch this video, play along with this campaign, which is a little overkill for someone like me who's done it two, three, four times. I don't have, I haven't done it enough that I've memorized the campaign and I can just kind of blindly do it and just keep POBB up. This is a great thing for bid gamers. Tip number three, three, learn a lot about a, one mechanic, not a little, about a lot of them, right? PoE has so many league mechanics that do so many things and they each have their own economy, their nuances, their build preferences, metas, most efficient way to farm, like types of maps to do, different strings that you need to use for searching to, to hide filters for them. Like it's, it's, you can go so, so deep on any mechanic that you wanna do, right? So my suggestion for mid gamers is when you pick your build for league start, also pick your league start farming mechanic. And that's what you're gonna learn a lot about this week, right? So for example, my cold dot elementalist, I tried to pick an Atlas tree that had everything that sounded interesting to me, right? I like blight, I like delve. Um, I thought altars were fun. Um, I did essence farming because everything said to do essence farming. So I had maps that would have like a disparate amount of things. Um, I tried to get into Expedition. I tried to get into, you know, Abyss because I thought like, oh, those are cool. I was like, oh, and, and, and I'll do Syndicate and, and I'll do the Bestiary. And I didn't really learn a lot about how those work and what they do. Like, I don't think it was until my third playthrough that I even understood that the Bestiary's point is a different way of getting currency or crafting something or making uniques. I really was just like, I kill monsters. Honestly, I use Einhar mostly to help me kill bosses I was having trouble, trouble with. Like, you know, strange side tip, if Einhar's around and you just don't kill one of the monsters and you go get to a hard unique, he'll help you out. <laughs> or at least draw some aggro. Um, and I might be wrong about that, but it felt like he helped me out. Um, and so, and I, I did that with my cold elementalist and like, I was making no money. Like, or I wasn't making the type of money I saw everybody else making. And so then I was like, okay, my build does really good with Blight and my build does really good with Delve. 
like I, those were kind of easy for me. Um, and you know, I made good money selling oils and I made good money selling, um, those transmuters or whatever Delve gives you, which I don't even know what they do really, uh, but people pay it a lot for them. Um, and so when I just focused on those two and I understood them better and better and understood how to do them better, and better and focused on them and just did them over and over and over and over and over and over, then I started making more money, like lots more money. Um, so like this league for 3.24, I'm doing a lightning dead eye build, um, lightning arrow dead eye build. And I'm gonna do learn everything about Delirium and Legion, because you know it's a really fast build. It clears maps fast, from what I understand about Legion and Delirium. It's basically like the more mo the more monsters you kill fast, the better you get. Um, and which this build is perfectly set up to do. Um, so I'm gonna learn everything I can about it. I'm gonna learn like how do I sell for it? How do I rig it? How do I set up an Atlas tree that's set up for it better? Um, and I feel like I'm gonna have a much better time currency wise with this. Making currency, especially if you're running in the trade on the trade league, is even either way, like getting currency, especially in the early game, is all about mastering a mechanic, farming it in its most efficient way, like maps per maps per minute, maps per hour, and selling those better and better drops that you get from that place because other people don't need it because they're focusing on something. So I'm not going to spend any time getting the types of the getting things from the syndicate. So I'm going to need to buy reveals, right? To, uh, to get like the types of crafts that I need for my gear if I need it. Now, speaking of tip number four, I say this tip for last because this, this is the thing that actually made me want to make this video in POE early game does not mean the campaign. I, I listened, I've watched so many videos and all the, and one of the things that threw me off and made me min max so much in the campaign is like, people keep saying things like early game, you really need to make sure that you're resistance capped and you have a hundred percent spell suppression. Um, when you get into early game, that's when you really need to like start farming for your six link chest and your six link bow and early game, you really need to like, and I'm just like, I'm level 24 and I can't afford any of that stuff. None of that's even possible for me. And a thing that I've learned is POE is broken into four sections, not like most of the games where there's an early, mid and late game or early, mid and end game. There's the campaign, which is like a prologue. Then there's early, mid and end game. The campaign is act one through 10. Nothing matters really. You work towards your build, you beat it, you get all your passive points, you allocate, the right, you allocate the right skill points according to your build, and you get to maps. Early game is getting your first two void stones, right? You can start thinking about min-maxing your gear, but you almost wanna keep the same type of campaign mindset where the only thing that matters is getting through your Atlas tree and getting your first two void stones, whatever you got to do to get there. At any farming strategy that you're looking up, like I want to farm Legion and I want to farm Delirium, I need to get to my first two void stones before that farming strategy is any good, right? So that's what early game is. Um, there's a line in the Maxwell Alk and Go guide that says it all in one sentence. It's critical note, progressing quickly. The early game, see there it is, and progression of the Atlas is all about speed. The faster you can get to the point in which you can begin farming Eldritch influence, the better. Prioritize completing the Eldritch quests and acquiring map completion over everything else. The currency you can earn after the first two void stones completely dwarfs what is possible before it. And that's what I'm saying about like, there's no reason to be doubling your time in the campaign trying to min max stuff when you really don't start getting the, the level of money and the level of currency and the level of drops that you need until you get all the way to your first two void stones that so you need to just, just, just blow your way through. Like if just do whatever you got to do, keep running until you hit a brick wall, fix it, then keep running until you hit a brick wall and fix it. The only thing that you can break is your skill tree. Um, and spending too much of your money early. That's the only thing you can break. Um, and like 
during the out and go part, you really do need to start selling like, like don't hold on to your currency that's really for like late game crafting stuff, like an, an orb of annulment, an orb of alchemy, fusing, horizons, regrets, all of that stuff is like really useful when you're ready to min max, you should just be selling those to the people who are ahead of you who need them to do something for their build because they are going to be looking for it to handle some situations to really, because you shouldn't be using an orb of annulment on, on until you're like looking at a piece of gear that could really be your end game gear or your late game gear. Like there's no reason you should be like wipe this down to base unless you're looking at something perfect. Um, Cause you don't want to, there's no reason to be spending currency on that when you're definitely going to get better stuff. You're going to get more drops like that. Um, even if you find a piece of gear that you feel like could be that, just save it, sell all of your other stuff, and then get to the first two void stones. And then you can really, then you're working with the amount of resources you need to mean something. And so the mid game is progressing your farming strat, right? That's where you're like, okay, now I'm, now I'm cranking. Now I'm getting the money I need to do what I need. And the end game is about doing the pinnacle bosses and farming at a really, really, really high level and getting your best in slot gear and, and, and target farming the uniques you need and target farming the, the syndicate unveils and target farming like higher and higher things or whatever your end game goal is. Like my goal for this league is to beat, is to create a second character that can beat pinnacle bosses. I wanna have two characters, one that maps like crazy, which is gonna be the lightning arrow dead eye and one that can kill all the bosses. And I wanna actually, if I can make one sale of a boss run, that's, that's my goal is to have a second character that I can like sell boss carries, like get paid to sell boss carries. I have, I have accomplished my goal. And so that's what end game is for me for both of these characters. So that's my quick tips for mid gamers. Um, I like that joke. I just, I just mean intermediate, not like man mid. Um, if you like this, I can do more for different parts of PoE or for other games that I play, leave a like and subscribe, comment below if this helps, or if I said something stupid that doesn't make any sense um, or is completely wrong, please, like I said, I haven't been playing as long as everybody else. I just have the opportunity to be like a few hundred, a hundred or so hours into the game and being able to give some tips from that level of perspective instead of people who've been playing this game for thousands of hours and tons and tons of leagues. Um, thanks for watching. I'll be streaming all day Friday um, for when league start comes. Come hang. You can follow me at twitch.tv slash Tosin underscore plays. Um, that'll be in the description. And I hope to see you there. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Have a good day.